can we have courage and bring light to dark times? That's the topic that we're going to address today on Flourishment. I'm your host, Tina Yeager, and today I have a marvelously talented guest. Her name is Camille Camporis, and she has been a Jim Henson Muppeteer, a comic actress, and then she got serious with her husband, so to speak, and they co-founded the Kairos Journal and Bible Mesh, which is a theological training institute, and they're adding graduate studies to that. That's the Alexandrian Institute, and they also became documentary producers in 2018 and done many projects, including the upcoming stellar project with Angel Studios, Bonhoeffer, which I can't wait to talk to you about today. Welcome, Camille. I am so thrilled to have you on the show. Well, thank you. That's such a wonderful introduction, Tina. <laughs> done a lot of things in your career. What really inspired you to talk about of all things, this very serious story of Bonhoeffer. Well, um, I retired from Muppets in about 1998, and then our my husband and I started um, Bible Mesh. I mean, Kara's Journal was really for pastors, but Bible Mesh was a training site. To we were appalled at the lack of biblical literacy in the church, and so we started with courses. And in one of the courses that we did, you know, we we started studying heroes of the faith sort of men that have really stood uh, against incredible obstacles, many of them losing their life, and women, um, you know, saints, great, great Christian saints of, of old. So in 2010, I read a book uh, by Eric Metaxas, a biography, and I was so inspired. I thought, wow, it has so many, such relevance to today. And that was that was 2012. Imagine now what we're living in. It's even more relevant. A couple of years went by and we couldn't believe a movie had not been done on this. So we thought, well, how hard can it be to do a movie? Yeah. <laughs> we asked very naively. Um, so we thought, let's just, let's just try to get a script and then we can turn it over to someone to do a movie. We can give it back to the author, back to Eric Metaxas if he wants it. We can, um, I had some connections in show business. We could, you know, see if it can be produced. But I, I knew enough, having worked in show business, that unless you get a good script, um, the danger, if you leave the script to Hollywood, the danger is they will gut the faith. It won't be a faith film. You know, it'll be a film about a great man of courage and they'll maybe touch upon the faith. So that's how we started. We didn't start out to make a movie. We started out to make a script. It took us seven years to get a script. It was just the most. I'm glad God didn't tell us at the beginning because I'm not sure we would have hung in there or even said yes. You know, uh, it took so long. We were so naive. It took us three screenwriters, two script doctors, consultants, uh, three directors that weighed in. And then eventually, seven years later, we did get a wonderful script. We got a wonderful screenwriter, you know, because we kept having to start all over. And then it took us another five years to make the movie, which was, uh, you know, we ran into COVID. So that shut us down for a year and a half. Uh, we were going to film in the Czech Republic. And then the Ukrainian war started. And that shut us down in the Czech Republic. Um, so we had tremendous obstacles. But, you know, within the first two years, we, we saw that this was a calling more than a, a great idea of ours, you know. <laughs> so we kept going. But that's how it started. Such perseverance. And I think that's one of the key items in the movie that relates to the situations that people face today. We don't always know what God is calling us to. And then once we start and we say, yes, here I am, and we hit hard times, it's very difficult to push through. And I think Bonhoeffer faced that as well. So that was part of the movie. Can you talk about how we can develop perseverance as soldiers for Christ, as people of faith in today's times? Well, very much like Bonhoeffer. So you don't you don't uh, walk with the Lord and have it all together. You know, you don't just come out like a perfect package. You have it's a journey. You have to walk the walk, just like Bonhoeffer did. He was very young when he came back from. You know, he spent some time in Harlem, which is really, really where he said he went from being a theologian, you know, head knowledge to to being a real Christian, heart knowledge. Um, so when he came back, you know. Hitler's rise was in, was happening and the Jews were being persecuted. And so he had these challenges. And this is how your faith grows. You just, it's a walk, it's a journey. You, you hit roadblocks, you hit great joys in your life. Uh, 
things happen, tragedy, tragedies, great things, bad things. And that's, and, and I think what keeps you persevering is, um, to keep the discipline, keep reading your Bible, keep being in community, keep praying. Don't let anything stop you from that because it's so hard to drift away if you do not have that kind of consistency. Um, so the first perseverance, I think, is just in pursuing God. Be surrounded by good people. Be, you know, bad company corrupts good morals. Um, and I think that's what we see in Bonhoeffer. Bonhoeffer, after his Harlem experience, he began to read the Bible every day, began to meditate on it. He hadn't done that as a theologian, which is so funny because, you know, many of them don't. And, and, and they're studying so hard that they forget, you know, the, the, the word of God. They study other things. And that was more true about the European ones in, at that era. I think today our theologians do study both. So that was really what kept him going was his spiritual disciplines, his his real um, pursuit of Christ, of God. And then, it, you know, you mature. You, you hit things and you hope that with God's wisdom through prayer, you will make the right decisions. You know, your life becomes a series of, of decisions that you make. Um, and a series for, for us, making the film and watching Bonhoeffer, uh, studying him for 12 years, for us, it was it was a deepening surrender of our lives uh, as we hit many, many obstacles. And, and when you watch his life, you see that he just keeps surrendering, you know, because the Nazis keep pushing back on him. So they ban him from preaching. So that's, a, you know, that's a deep surrender because you say, Lord, I I don't have that prophetic voice now in the pulpit. And then they banned him from writing. And then they banned him from being in Berlin. You know, he started an underground seminary and they closed that down. So it, it's, you, you see him get more and more surrendered, um, more and more resigned to what what's happening. What, what's happening is horrific, you know. I hope we never have to face those challenges. And yet we are facing challenges in today's times a little at a time, just the way it was a little at a time in Nazi Germany. It didn't start out with the persecution of the Jews. It started out just a little bit like putting a, a lobster in hot water and warming the water up, so to speak. So this is what he faced a little more, a little more, a little more hardship at a time while these things were happening. Do you see the relevance of this movie to today's times very clearly? Well, when we started, let me just give you one one big example. When we started, there was really not that much anti-Semitism, but we were seeing it in Europe. You know, we were very surprised. It was really, we were seeing a lot of it in France growing, places like that, places like Hungary, you know, places were beginning to, we would read things, our friends would send us things. And then, of course, now 12 years later, it's, it's right here. It's on our college campuses. It's all around us. It's, it's shocking to me. And the movie is about a lot of things. It's about anti-Semitism. It's about being totally committed as a Christian. It's about calling a church, churches that may be asleep, calling them back to their first love, uh, to loving God and, and loving their neighbor in a sacrificial way. Uh, it's about racial, uh, the racial divide that we, that we have. Um, back then it was segregation. So you see him go to Harlem. He befriends an African American and Bonhoeffer is just astounded at the at, at the hatred the prejudice in america you know he thought he was coming to the land of the home the free uh, land of the brave and the free and um yeah he was very surprised by that in fact he's, he makes a famous statement in one of his letters he says you know it's thank god we don't have anything like this in germany and then of course within two years they do you know they have a different kind of hatred but it's uh, it's not the color of your skin, but it's certainly racial hatred, you know, what they considered an inferior race. It was so key that he was steeped in scripture, first of all, with his relationship with God. And he made a personal relationship with someone who was not of the same race as himself. And I think personal relationships make such a difference. What would you advise people to do to help them overcome the barriers that we're facing today in all areas with people who aren't like us, those conflicts, those things that divide us? I think you have to be very open to what God wants from you. And then he will put you in those places. You know, we sometimes, I used to, when I was first uh, a very young actress and the 
young Christian in New York. I, I came to know the Lord in 1980. And we would pray, oh, Lord, you know, take all of me. But there was always something we were holding back. You know, like, I will live anywhere, but of course, not there, you know, <laughs> not in Brooklyn or not in the Bronx or not in Africa or not in Europe. So, you, you know, you think you, you are uh, so open and so surrendered. And I think that's where it starts. It starts saying, Lord, because the Lord knows what blocks you have, you know, maybe a race, maybe money is your big issue, you know, or maybe that you don't like to be around people that are underprivileged or, um you know, don't have the latest uh, designer things. You, you just don't know. People have so many different prejudices. And so you have to be really open to God to say, Lord, change me. Because, the, because I think the goal of, of, uh, of our journey is to become increasingly uh, surrendered to the image of Christ, you know, to be what, what he is, to be like him. So he'll tell you what your blockages are, you know. I think our prayer should be um, change me. Just continue to change me, Lord. And you've offered so many ways that people can be transformed and serve God better and live out their purpose in their lives. How can people stay connected with you and all the resources that you have to offer and go see this amazing Bonhoeffer film? Well, I think the first thing, yes, go see it in a theater. You know, it opens November 22nd. Bonhoeffer, as, as my husband and I, was very big on community. He wrote a book of community about the community of Christ. Uh, it's called Life Together. So he believes you really need to be in community and alone with God. And the thing about theatrical uh, distribution, uh, going to a movie, is you are watching something in community, which is an a really powerful experience. It's like going to church or in community rather than just praying at home. So I really encourage people to see this maybe with your Bible study group, with the church group, with your family, with your friends, not sitting alone unless you have to, you know, with your iPad. Um, we do enough of that. And then as far as keeping in touch with me, I, I you can write Bible Mesh. That is our training site. And it's BibleMesh.com. And actually, we are going to start an eight-week course on Bonhoeffer, which you can we, you can sign up for it now um, because we felt that two hours didn't really do justice to the man. He, he had just wonderful theology, and it just, uh, you know, it grows as he, as he experiences so much and so much sadness. Um, he, he becomes increasingly alone, you know, and then in prison he's alone. So it's, it's, it's great to see how, and he's such a deep thinker. It's great to see how his theology just grows and blossoms. And so we're going to have this eight-week course just for the average person. This is not for a master's program or anything. Uh, it's really just for the average person in the pew. And you can find that course on BibleMesh.com. Thank you for joining us today on Flourishment, Camille. I hope that all of you listening were inspired to go out and watch the Bonhoeffer movie and to develop some of those character traits by following the example in his story. And of course, I also hope that you come back for the next episode of Flourishment. Mm -hmm.